Hey everyone, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and today we're gonna to be building what I'm calling a vintage star map. Now call it what you will, but this is a really cool looking motion design piece that I just kind of created on a whim. So without any further ado, let's dive into After Effects and let's see how I built this. Okay, first things first, I've got my composition set up here. It is a 1920 by 1080 comp at 24 frames per second. It's 10 seconds long. And I always like to start with a solid, typically a black solid that I just put in the background. It's just a typical practice I do of always having a solid back there. Next thing I'm adding here is a Texture Labs grunge texture. And it's just sitting right here in the frame and I've got a levels effect applied to it just to give it a little bit more brightness, a little bit more visual appeal. Above that, I've got a pre-composition here called Rings One. And if I double click on this, you're gonna see it's a very simple, shape layer it's just an inner ring an outer dotted ring in this inner ring if i solo it right here you're gonna see i've got a repeater applied to it three copies and i'm just adding a simple keyframe animation to the scale so i'm going from 100 percent up to 175 percent and then to this i've applied an expression of property loop out duration and that's what we see right here. So if I preview this, you can see it just expands outward with three copies and it just loops itself repeating over and over again. Jumping back into the composition, above the rings I have a line pre-comp and if I double click this, again, it's just a shape layer. I'm gonna open it up and it's a repeater set to three copies. And the only difference here is that the rotation is enabled. So if I take this down, to a zero rotation, it looks like just one line, but because I have three copies and I'm rotating it like so, it looks like this. Jumping back into the composition on top of the lines, I've got one more pre-comp called Rings 2. And if I double click on this, it's just one shape layer. And it's the same principle happening again. It's just a repeater with four copies applied, two keyframes starting at a scale of 100%, moving up to a scale of 150%. And again, I applied the same expression of property loop out. And we play this back, you can see that's what's happening here. Now the lines are thick when they start and they're thinner as they come outwards, as you can see here. And that is happening because in the repeater, I also have an end opacity of zero. If I kept this set to 100, you're going to see the lines are exactly the same thickness starting and ending, but setting it to 0% opacity at the end, it gives it a more unique look as it's expanding outwards and it kind of separates it from the first rings pre-comp. Now, you're probably also wondering why is it pink? That's because to this top rings layer, I have an ultra glow effect applied and this is from Sapphire. And I believe I chose a preset here I changed the primary glow to white, but the afterglow here is set to a pink color. And this just adds some visual interest. You can see it adds some hot spots on the lines. It's also giving the lines kind of a multiply to look. So if I turn it off, you can see there's the single lines, but on, it almost looks like it has three sets of lines across it. And it just kind of gives it a really interesting visual look. So if I preview this, you can see, maybe this isn't a star map. Maybe this is just a, a radar effect over a texture. I'm calling it a star map because I kind of set the intention of creating one when I started. And a lot of times when I create a project, I do that. And so we're just calling this a star map for now. If you're eager to create motion design that's gritty, atmospheric, and cinematic, like the example I'm showing you, I invite you to explore the Motion Science membership at www.motionscience.tv slash mastery. Inside this membership, you're gonna find hundreds of projects just like this one, including the project files, and they can help you elevate your motion design to develop a very striking cinematic style through our trainings, our techniques, and our supportive community. So I definitely invite you to check it out. Now let's go back to the training. But we'll move into the next composition here. And what this is, is I made the layers 3D. So. You can see I took the rings, two lines, and rings, one, and I made them 3D layers. I also made the texture a 3D layer, and I added a camera, which is why we have perspective here. Now, if we didn't have the camera turned on, if I was just to turn that off, everything's very flat here. And if I change from one view to two views, and I change this from top to a custom view one, you're gonna see here it is. Everything has been rotated 
it's flat. But when we turn that camera on, like we see here, we're kind of angled down looking at that. Now, the other thing I did here is to the texture labs, texture in the background, I also applied a reptile effect because if you see here in the, if I go back to one view, you can see, we can see an edge here. So if, even if I go back to the starting frame here, there's this kind of void out here and I don't want that. I want that to texture to fill the entire frame. So I'm using a reptile and I'm expanding it down and up. So if I turn that on, you're gonna see it now it's expanded outwards. It's also set to a tiling of unfold instead of repeat. It looks like it just kind of unfolds and it, it spreads outwards. So as we're moving around this, there's no black void to see. I also parented the camera to a knoll in the center of my composition. So here is the knoll right here in the center point. And if I hit R for rotation, you're gonna see I'm rotating on the Y axis, starting at zero, going all the way up to 360 degrees. And when I parent my camera, to that knoll, if I just look at the texture here, now the camera is parented to that knoll, so the knoll is rotating around like so, and it makes the camera rotate you know, around as well. So if I play that back, you're gonna see this is what it looks like. Now, if I hit AA on my keyboard, I also have depth of field turned on, and so it gives it some shallow depth, right? We're focused in the middle, and outside of that, everything's kind of out of focus. So if I turn depth of field off, like so, you can see this is how it looks. It's, you know, it's still interesting. Let's actually go ahead and unsolo the texture so we can see everything here. So if I play this back now without depth of field, you can see, I mean, it's interesting, right? It's kind of like we're looking over this terrain and there's this radar kind of thing. So that's what it looks like with depth of field turned off. Now let's repeat the same thing and let's turn depth of field on and let's check that out. Okay, and there is depth of field on, and look how much more visually interesting this is to look at. It's much more cinematic. It's looking pretty cool at this point. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move into our final composition here. And in this composition, same motion as before, the same depth of field, same colors. But what I did is I put an adjustment layer over the top that I'm calling effects. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that layer on. And the first effect I applied to this is called S Free Lens. This is by Sapphire. And I started with the preset, but I made a few fine adjustments to it. And essentially what this effect is doing, it's emulating a lens on a camera being kind of held up to the camera. So it's it's not screwed into the camera body. So therefore, if the lens has just a slight movement to it, it's going to make the image inside the lens look distorted, right? It's gonna push things around. So you can see here, when I turned it on, the entire composition kind of shifted up and to the right. So this is with, and this is without, right? This is the original composition, this is with. So it adds this kind of haze that we see here in the foreground, like some cloudiness because maybe there's something on the lens and it also kind of pushes things up because the lens has been slightly tilted. This is a really fun plugin to play around with. I don't use it very often, but for certain occasions like this, it looks really cool. And the final effect I applied is from Red Giant. It is Uni Retrograde and it gives it this old kind of vintage feel, which I really dig. It takes the color out, it takes the pink out, it makes it straight up black and white. It gives it some nice grain, some nice dust, some really nice edges. And I started with a basic preset in here. I went in and I changed the frame size from four by three to original so that we have the expanded edges. I left the edge turned to projector edge, which isn't really nice. And I turned down a lot of the grime. And when we do all that, we take the time to tweak these parameters. This is what we get. So here's just a very short preview of what we've created. It's looking really cool. I think we can actually take this one step further and that's by adding a flare. So let's do that now. And to add the flare, all I'm doing is adding a new solid layer here called flare. And to that layer, I'm applying a Red Giant No Light Factory EZ using a very simple preset and just adding it right here just gives this piece the center focal point of where our eyes should look, like there's something coming out of here, right? So adding this flare brings us into the whole star map realm because this is like our little sun that's emanating these rings from it. Like maybe we're measuring light coming from that sun or whatever it may be. And that is how I created this vintage star map. My name is Cameron with Motion Science. I hope that you learned something new with this tutorial and I will see you in the next video.